guys and welcome back to my channel my name is Johanna and for those of you who are new here welcome and for those of you who are returning welcome back here on my channel I do planner and planner related videos DIY tutorials budget videos and the occasional new release video of items that I've listed to my Etsy shop and if that is of interest to you please consider subscribing to my channel and if you hit that little notification bell you'll always be notified of when I do load a new video and if you could also comment like and share this video that does help my channel grow and that would be truly appreciated so for today's craft series project we're going to be working on this here and this is how I did a um, mock-up of how it, it could be packaged because this is something I think you could definitely make for a craft fair. Now, um, for, and, and speaking about that, I won't give you prices on what I think you should charge because I think that's really just dependent upon um, how much you bought your materials for, what your market is and things like that. But I will tell you um, some of the components that I have purchased um, and what I would have charged if I were doing a, a craft fair. But I think this also could be a good craft that you could do in a group. I think it could be something that you can make for yourself. I mean, the applications of it is just whatever you want to, but I just, I wanted to point that out. So I will take this out. I didn't measure it before I put it in, but the clear bag that I used, it was just in my stash. It is six and a quarter by 11 and a half. So that will fit this right here. And what this is, is a little envelope style junior composition notebook. And if you noticed, I always intended to open it up because that's where I kept my measurements. But I just, I, I wanted to show you the packaging um, on the front end versus the back end. So the tutorial I will be doing will be showing you how to make this, although, um, I do have a bunch that were in my stash because I did do a craft fair a few years ago where it doesn't have the pocket, it just opens. So either one of these I think would work rather well. Um, I picked up these little junior legal pads from Walmart and I can get them for three for a dollar. I don't know if this is something that you can pick up in your local Walmart or if you have a Dollar Tree or um, you know, if you're international, I believe Primark is your version of Dollar Tree, or maybe Daiso has, but all of the measurements that I will be giving you and that will be on my corresponding blog post is based off of the materials that I have on hand. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so I believe these little junior composition, or no, these junior legal pads measure five by eight but let me just double check so it is a little less than five inches wide and yeah it's it's about eight inches tall so let me put that make a note so the construction of this is just one single side of paper or one sheet of paper and then I have covered it just to make it a little bit more decorative and then this ultimately would be actually score taped down but I didn't want to do that so that I could show you that but what we'll do is we will make this cover first again the one that I'm going to be doing here in the tutorial will have this little flap but if you decided to just cut it off at that point right there, and I will put that in the blog, then that's just one less thing you need, plus then you won't need the Velcro dots, all right? Now the way I like to start those is actually with a solid piece of paper. And I just finished a different tutorial, and I have some off cuts here. And so I think I'll try to find something that works well with these two here. If I can find that deep purple, which I think is right here, does that look good? Okay. 
and the reason I like to use a solid is because this is rather thick and this isn't so I just I like giving it a little bit more security let's see if there's something in here there's an orange how does the orange look for a Halloween booklet I think this actually looks good now depending on the paper that you choose you can make this for Halloween you can make this for Thanksgiving Christmas um, Easter you can just make a generic one with butterflies or flowers Harry Potter Disney I mean really the only limitation is what paper you have <laughs> So, I mean, that's just something to consider. Now, if you are making this for a craft fair, and let's say you're doing it for the holiday craft fair, I would make a few holiday themed. So if you're doing a craft fair later September, early October, you may want to have a few Halloween themed, you may want to have a few fall themed, and you may want to have a few Christmas theme or Hanukkah themed or Diwali or, or, or whatever. But the bulk of your inventory, you're probably going to want to do something more or generic or faith-based that isn't tied to a holiday because if you think about it so like let's say you're buying something for Halloween and you want it to be used for the month of October then your selling time is really late August September by the time you get to October someone may not want to use this and past Halloween they may not want to keep using it same for Christmas if you're buying something as a Christmas present you don't want to open something that is Christmas themed because you are literally opening it up on the day that it ends right? So it is good to have some seasonal things, but the bulk of it should actually be more um, non-seasonal so that if they do open it up as a gift on Christmas or if you're opening up on, on fall or for St. Nick's Day or Hanukkah or whatever, whatever you're making it for or whatever your customer is buying it for, then they get a lot more use out of it. That's just my thoughts. Okay, so for the actual cover, we're going to need a piece that is eight and a half tall by 12 inches wide. So let me cut off that strip at the top. That makes this 12 inches. And then I, actually I just could have cut it at the eight and a half since it is a 12 inch square, but whatever. So we're going to cut eight and a half and we're doing that because we do want to give a little bit of border top and bottom. That's just my preference. And so that's all we're going to need to cut for that one. And then we will need two pieces. Let's see how wide this is. That's seven tall. Reason, and because it's an off cut, it, I can't really get the pieces that I need. Well, in the size that I need, but I need two pieces that are eight by four and seven eighths. And that will be the front and the back cover. Because that should fit like that so that there is a little bit of a border. Did I cut that too short? No, I think that still works. But because I already had an off cut, I'm not going to be able to get two like that, which is fine. So, oh, maybe I am. Oh, hey guys, maybe I am. All right, so we'll do another one the exact same way. I'll make sure this is eight. So that's eight by four and seven eighths. Oh, which it already was. Was that? That's because that's the one we just got. <laughs> and I'm not even going to edit that out. This is real life, guys. <laughs> So we're gonna do this one eight. So we need two paces, like I said, eight by four and seven eighths. 
we need one piece that is eight and one eighth. And let's use this spider one. So eight and one eighth. Kind of line that up on the paper cutter. And then make this eight inches. And then we need one that is five by three. I think we can do this. So that's five. And that's three. All right, so that's all of the cuts that we're going to need. And then I will need my scoreboard. And so those pieces here, we'll put to the side because we don't need to score them, but we do need to score our cover. And I, I broke it. I guess I could E6000 it together, but I have a lot of pressure when I put on this, so that's why it snapped, but it's still usable. And so I want to score this at five and one eighth and five and three eighths and 10 and three eighths and 10 and five eighths. So one, two, three, four and five. And that's all the scoring we're going to need. And then I will bend this over and I actually like it because I don't know if you can see it but there is a smooth side and a textured side I like using the textured side on the outside that's just my preference you can choose whichever way you want now if you use a thicker weight cardstock that is double sided then you can actually skip all of this if you wanted to but like I said I know that this thickness of, of paper is a good weight for me and then I can uh, customize the cover however I want to and I think you just get more versatility that way so I want to really buff that in but I don't want to be too crazy with it because I don't want to crack my paper and then I will do the other two and that will give us room for the width of the notebook so that it it takes into account that there is a thickness to that notebook okay and that's the way that we would do it and then there is that little bit of a spine and then we'll open this up and because our matte pages have no you know true direction we can put this down any way we want to and so let me glue that down now you can use score tape or you can just use a wet glue. I find wet glue is a little bit more forgiving because you have a little bit of time to position it versus score tape where you may or may not be able to lift it up. Okay, and so I would definitely get around the edges. And this is a Craft Bond all-purpose glue. Um, it does work really well with paper and it dries quickly. So it does give you a little bit of movement time, but not too much. And I don't, I want to basically get it in between the score lines. So there'll definitely be more top and bottom, but that's okay. I just like seeing the little bit of color pop through. And so that's actually our cover because our flap is right here. And then this is the backside. Again, purely optional. I just, I like how finished it makes it look.
And then you're gonna wanna line it up with each other. And you'll never be able to see that it's a straight line when you're using it, but as the creator, you'll know. <laughs> so, again, you wanna make things that you're either crafting as a group for a project or that you're making um, for your customers that is as nice as you can make a handmade item. And then this one, I kind of like, well no, because that's upside down, right? Because if we close it, it actually will be like this. I don't know if I like it at the top or, no, I actually like it like that. So let's flip this out because in that way we can use this one as a guide and then glue this one. Again, purely optional, but I just liked the finished touch that it gives. And I'm rushing because you don't really need to see me spreading glue on a piece of paper, <laughs> but when you do it, you may wanna be um, take a little bit more time. And if you're doing this as like a group project for kids or a party or whatever, what you may wanna do is have everything cut up. And if it's a themed, then just have a variety of different sizes or a variety of different prints. Um, if it is like for a girl's party or a boy's party. Again, if you just have a variety of things that people can choose from and you have your things all cut up, then you don't have to worry about everyone having to measure things themselves and that might make it go quickly. If you're doing this assembly style because you are gonna be doing it for a craft fair, then you may wanna just cut all your covers, cut all of your mats and then just assembly style it together. Okay, so that's our cover. So that's actually really cute and I love the pop of the orange. And this is the legal pad that I had picked up from Walmart. It does come three for a dollar. And so I'm going to take one of these out. And the reason why we cut that three inch piece is because, I mean, you could leave it, but I just like finishing it up. Now, not much of the spiders will show through, but that's, that's perfectly okay. It's just enough and I really just, I wanna cover that. Now, because this will have a little bit of, not wear, but I'm not sure how to explain it, but this one, um, you can use glue, but I would definitely recommend that you also use score tape. We'll put score tape here. And if I can find the same products, I will just link them below. So I would put one there. I would put one at the top here. I would put one at the top here. And I can fold that in on itself, so that's not a problem. And then I would put one here. And then I would put glue here and here. I won't put it on the back yet because I'm gonna, gonna have this rusted. And if you really buff in your score tape, you usually have an easier time of taking off that top piece of paper. I should have done that before I put the glue down. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to choose actually with the leg that's kind of scary so I'm going to put it right at the bottom edge and again because you're using score tape you pretty much have a one-shot deal and so you're going to really want to 
buff that in. There's a little bit of overhang that I believe we can trim up because uh, I don't know if it's an overhang on just on that part or on the back part, so I don't want to cut it yet. And then you want to feel the edge of the top of it. And you kind of want to buff that in and then bring it down and then buff that in. And the reason why we don't score this is because um, the assumption is all of these are the exact same width, but if they're not, then you're scoring for nothing. And I think this is just an easier thing to do. And then this back one, now we can take this off and then we'll put our glue. And then these little overhangs, we can just put it on itself so that there's nothing sticking. And then I'll put some glue at the edge here. And then I'll put some glue in there. Now this will actually be, be taped down to the um, cover, but still, it just gives you a much better finished edge because you could make this if you wanted to figure out the dimensions something where you could just slide this in but I'm not so that will not be included in this tutorial all right so it just gives it a nice a nicer edge to me and then we'll see if we can trim some of that off not the end of the world if you can't I want to just make it as nice as you can okay so there's that put that to the side and then this one um, you can glue it in I think what we'll do is a combination of score tape and glue And I think that just gives a little bit more stability. Again, this is not something that you're going to have as an heirloom. <laughs> this is not something you're gonna pass down to your grandkids. Um, but it does just make a normal junior size legal notepad just a little bit more fun to both use and to give. So, and then we'll put some tape some glue rather and you can use um, tacky glue you can use Elmer's glue um, I've heard really good things about the fabric tack um, the Tombow again because you're using a combination of the two different products uh, you just want a, a pretty decent glue definitely not a glue stick I think you want to err on the side of caution with this and use liquid glue and then you know whatever double-sided tape that you have and then we just also want to position this between the two score lines because I'm trying to get it in frame it's kind of hard for me to see but we do have a little bit of a border on the top and the bottom and then just press that in and then because we did allow for that, I believe it's like a quarter inch, um, we have something so that this flies really flat. I really like how that looks with the spiders coming in on that right there. And then the last thing to finish this up, because you could just leave it like that, but it, it's floppy, is take some Velcro dots. And I have this on hand because I make cash envelopes. And then you just want to stick two down. Although if you're doing this as a group and you want to be economical, I really should have left it on there. You can cut it in half. Again, this is not meant to last through the decades. So you just want something to hold it down. 
and I like to put it in the flap. So we'll go in a little ways and then we'll take off that top piece of tape and just eyeballing that. You just really want to have a bit of a closure. And then kind of want to line it up and then press it down. And it still closes. You're only using one dot per notebook. So whether you're doing this for a craft fair, whether you're doing this as a group, I mean, it just gives you more bang for your bunk, buck, essentially. And then to finish it off, you could, if you wanted to, if you have some Halloween stickers, you could just add a sticker. So I think this trick or treat one is kind of nice. And I think that just gives it a finishing touch. On some of the ones that I showed you earlier, I actually would mat this and then stick that down. But again, depending on what you're using it for, you may just want to keep your cost down. Now it's hard for me to give you costs on this because um, I don't know, I don't remember when I bought this, so I don't know how much the glue was. This was, um, I bought this after the Halloween season ended last year from Target, so I believe this was on sale. Uh, the paper I got from Amazon, and it was a Martha Stewart paper pad, I think I got for like five or ten dollars. And the Del Velcro dots I buy by 500 dots of the tops and the bottoms. So, I mean, altogether, this probably cost me about a dollar fifty, a dollar seventy um, to to make. Yeah, because the notebook itself is like thirty something cents, and then all the paper and the glue. We're not factoring any cost for our time. We're just really factoring cost of materials. And then I would probably sell this for like three or four dollars. Because I don't know that I would want to buy something, even though it's super adorable, for more than three or four dollars. So I think that would be reasonable. But depending on what you have or what you're making it for, you may want to charge a little bit more or a little bit less. Again, it really depends on your market and what your cost of materials are. All right, guys, so I think that came out really cute. I'm glad I used the orange. I think that just makes the spiders and the spider web pop. And that's actually, even though it's it's not as stylized nor has any gold in it, I think that makes a really cute touch. Thank you so much for following me on this journey. Let me know um, what you would use this for. Again, sky's the limit on what you can make it for, just depending on your paper weight. And as always, guys, aloha. Thank you.